Let's go. So you're a new videographer and maybe you've been building your skills, practicing for a few months now and you're finally ready to get your first paid client. And by paid client, I don't necessarily mean like those little small projects you do here and there for like a hundred bucks, 300 bucks. I mean like something where you finally are charging a decent amount for one smaller project. It's not like this whole, you know, case of projects. Like for me, I wanted to charge 750 per video when I first, not when I first started, but when I started gaining confidence and wanted to start charging actual dollar dollar bills for each individual video, that's the rate that I shot for. I shot for $750 for one video. Oh, and you are gonna severely undercharge for a very long time and that's okay. Because like I said, you are new, you are starting out and you are trying to figure out, you know, your abilities, how much you wanna charge for those abilities, your scope of like, how much you can do in like a deadline. And there are three main things that I can suggest any videographer does when they're first starting out to get their first paid client. And for me, number one was doing outreach. And I know that seems like, well, duh, how else are you gonna get clients? You'd be surprised how many people don't do outreach. And by outreach, I mean like cold calls, DMs, texts, um, emails, anything that requires you to send out information about your service, your business to a stranger that you do not know, or even people that you do know, family, friends, that's warm outreach, but either way, you'd be surprised. There's so many creators out there who don't outreach. And it's because of a few things. One, they're afraid of rejection. They don't want people to be like, no. <laughs> Well, I'm here to tell you that no is really not that bad. It doesn't hurt that much. And in fact, it kind of makes you feel relieved if someone says no, you can move on to the next one like that. And it's like, oh, all right, we got this done with. I don't have to worry about making you a free mood, mood board, storyboard that's gonna take up all this time. Like it saves you time when people say no. So let's be honest. Um, so yeah, so I would suggest doing outreach. And I know it's scary, but once you get past the no and you receive that one yes, oh my God, guys, it is like, it is like, oh my God. it is like heaven because you're like, oh, I get it. Like the curtain has been revealed or moved. I can see behind it. It's awesome. So that's number one I would suggest is doing some actual outreach. And also when you're doing outreach, don't just send like one to 10 freaking messages. Send like a hundred because not gonna lie, only like one or two of those people are gonna respond to you. And especially in the beginning, if you don't have a big portfolio built, that's okay but you have to work like 10 times as hard to get the amount of relevancy that somebody who's been in the field has, you know, gained over that same experience of years, whatever. Number one, do outreach. I started out in the same shoes as you where I didn't even know like, how do I get my first client? So I sent a bunch of outreach messages like every day and I would get people back and I would say like some of them were like not as you know open to it some of them wanted more proof and evidence that I was even good at what I did and then I had um, a long shot and I sent Kiss um, Cosmetics Inc or whatever Kiss um, Falscara and Kiss Colors and Care those were two people that I reached out to that had they were very large corporations. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like <laughs> I'm going to send my, my uh, little DM to them, see if they are interested. And sure enough, like they were like one of the only few people in the beginning that got back to me. And they were the ones that I thought weren't because of how much capital they had and like whatever they could afford whoever they wanted. Why would they want to work with me? But all because I took this step and sent the DM. I have them as a client still to this day. <laughs> It's just like, number one, do outreach and don't be afraid. Like if you want a client, send a DM to that client. Send it to Apple. Send it to freaking, who's the other ones? Why am I, uh, Starbucks. Send it to Lambo. I don't even know. But for real, like what are you being, what are you afraid of? Like just go try it, see what happens. And I promise you, you're gonna be commenting on this video below and you're gonna be like, whoa, Brooke, like, I took your advice and I sent a hundred DMs and emails and all this and I got my first client and it was awesome and I'm gonna be like bro there's a donation button like right there <sighs> oh and before I forget 
when you're doing your outreach, do not, I mean, it's better than not sending any at all, but don't just send like mass emails and mass texts. And another funny thing is I've done this and I've accidentally used the wrong company's name in a different company's email and they caught me and they would call me out on it and now I potentially will never do work with them ever again. So don't make that stupid mistake that I did. So number two, follow up. OMG guys. So my husband, he has been in real estate in the past and the firm that he worked under, they taught him that within like I think a day or two, you should be following up on people who don't respond to you. And in your head, you're probably like, oh, that's really annoying. Like I just messaged them yesterday. They're going to be like, this girl is needy, desperate, whatever. Actually, in their experience, he learned that the sooner you follow up, the sooner they reply because life happens, things happen, people forget things, forget that they even saw an email or a text. So it's just funny because you don't, it's funny because you don't think these things are so important and relevant until you're literally like, oh my God, like they responded to my follow-up. Like I wish, let me see if I can find an example. <laughs> that was gross, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So for example, I reached out to EHP Labs. They are like a supplement nutrition brand and they sell a lot of supplements. So. For example, this was one of my DMs that I sent November 9th of last year. Hey there, I'm a videographer located in the Phoenix area um, and I just came across one of your ads for EHP Labs. I specialize in creating fun product videos. I was curious if you are currently working with any creatives at the moment. If not, I would love to help. Smiley face. Ah, that's just a little piece of advice that people don't talk about is follow up on the DMs, emails, text calls that you send, even if at the moment they respond and like, oh, we're not looking for creatives at the moment. That's okay, just be like, oh, okay, that's fine. If, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna go ahead and send you a link to my website or a link to my portfolio in case anything changes. I would love to be considered for future project or projects, whatever. I don't know what your communication is gonna be like, but that's how I communicate. I'm very casual, so, um, but yeah. Um, don't leave it hanging. Send your email, send your portfolio, whatever contact information to keep you on file and then follow up later. And let's say you did follow up and they're like, no, um, we're not looking, blah, blah, blah. You can come back to them in like a few months, a few, um, like maybe even a year and they have a different marketing budget or maybe they have new CEO or whatever and they're actually willing to hire um, for content. So you never know, but following up is so important and I just want to express that. So that's number two. Tip number three, I feel so bad because I feel like these tips are like obvious, but people are going to be like wanting like secret magic tips. These aren't secret. They're just not talked about because people don't think they're sexy. But anyway, tip number three, you better prepare. And I didn't mean to say that as a threat, but I mean, it kind of is a threat. If you don't prepare, you're probably gonna fail and never have that client ever again, so. I only say this because I feel like this was one of my biggest downfalls when I first started. Because when you're, when you're learning a new skill or even like a new trait, a new hobby, whatever, there is so many moving parts and pieces and things that you have to learn and pick up and it's just a lot. And it's really easy to get confused and disorganized and dysfunctional. And imagine that side, plus you're getting new clients that don't have a reputation built with you yet. And so it's like, you're trying to figure out your routine. You're trying to seem professional to them. It's hard guys. Like I, <laughs> I learned a lot of lessons this way. So maybe you don't have to throw yourself into the fire like I did. Um, but yeah, very painful stuff there. Um, for example, I never used to create mood boards or storyboards. I never used to sit down and create like a process that my client is going to see. I never used to create like deadlines. I never used to create like briefing call or check-in calls. I just didn't know. I didn't know how to schedule these things. I didn't know how organization worked. And so in the beginning, I feel bad for a lot of my clients because I was very like all over the place. I would do like 
very bad communication. Like I would probably like do one video call and then go weeks without even talking until they emailed me asking me like, where are you? <laughs> like, and I'm like, I'm focused. I'm trying to get your project done before this deadline. But yeah, the truth is if you don't prepare, you're probably going to fail. What's that saying? Um, plan. Oh wait, if you don't, pre if you don't plan to prepare, you prepare to fail. I think that's what it is. And it's so true. Like the amount of embarrassing moments that I've had with paid clients um, because I was just underprepared and I didn't think ahead. I didn't put them first. I was so stressed about just getting the job done that I didn't think about how can I make this run smoothly? And as a videographer, having a plan, having, having scene by scene, timestamp, you know, second by second, what's going to happen. Wow. The difference it makes in the quality of your work. Like it's so silly, but I only like, I'm, I know that I'm not a great <laughs> vlogger or speaker yet, but I just know like these three little things, if you knew this when you first started and you like actively tried to better those three things, you can charge whatever you want for a video, you know, so far that your work is good. But yeah, so I would say three main tips for this video was one, do outreach and do a lot of it. Maybe make a goal of like 50 to 100 a day on any platform, really. Um, I've personally um, had only like a lot of success on um, Instagram, but I don't know, people tell me to do LinkedIn too. So I've been working on there. Haven't had much success there yet, but I'll keep you updated. So yeah, one, do outreach. And um, two, follow up on your outreaches. It sounds so silly. I can't stop saying it with this video. Oh my God, I'm like, it's gonna be so silly. Uh, and three, um, plan, prepare, do whatever it takes to get organized because guys, it only gets crazier. You only add more moving pieces. You only hire actors. You only hire models. You only start doing makeup artists and, you know, managers and all this stuff. And people just start coming into things. And if you're not organized and you don't have a plan and your client can't precisely see the plan, they don't have confidence in you. And so obviously you can't charge very much because they're not going to pay you. They're not confident. Um, but yeah, so those three things, guys, if you can really narrow those down, I just really think it's gonna skyrocket your first um, paid client, you know? Oh, before we go, I'll show you my first paid client check. I framed it. <laughs> I was so proud of myself, guys. So really quick before I close out, this was for a rice company. They were my first client that I charged $1,049. And I'll tell you exactly what they got for that $1,049 too. I made two, I think it was 15 to 30 second video ads and they received 15 to 20 images as well. When you're first starting out, like I said, that's a lot of money. And I was so excited. I was like, somebody's finally gonna send me um, product and pay me like actual money to get work done that I want to do. So yeah, I framed it. I'm proud of myself and I can't wait. And if you guys get your first paid client and it happens to be from some of the advice I gave in this video, frame your freaking thing and you know, sh tag me in it. Like this is awesome. It's a very, uh, very fun achievement. I can't wait to look back on it in the past or in the future. <laughs> and just to close out guys, I know this is my second video. Um, vlog I've ever done in my life. So I'm sorry if it's choppy. I'm sorry if I'm awkward and I'm so sorry if the information wasn't as thorough as you wanted, but I am totally open to taking advice, requests, um, anything that'll grow this channel and build a community for videographers and video editors that are in, well, in my niche, the product niche, but who are just trying to finally like get paid, move on and grow. So yeah, I'm Brooke. And if you want to check out my Instagram, it's brooke.blasco. All of my social medias are just my name. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, please comment below. If you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe to see more um, videos like this, more tutorials. And yeah, I'm really excited to finally make some new friends in this community. So peace out guys. See you next time.